Hey everyone, my name is Jack Garrier from Vector Tech, and in today's video I'm going to be teaching you how to set up and configure DHCP on a Cisco IOS device to dynamically assign IP addresses to devices on your network. Alright, so to go ahead and set up this lab, what we're going to do is we're going to grab a switch, a 2960, we're going to plop it right there, and then we're going to grab two laptops, plop them here and here, and then connect them using copper straight throughs to our switch. I'm just going to use fast ethernet 0 uh, slash 1 and 0 slash 2. So let's go ahead, let's get these plugged into the laptop, we'll fast forward time, and now those ports are up. Let's go ahead, let's get into our actual switch here. And we're going to do our first few basic configurations. We're going to do enable conf t, right, configure terminal. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to give it a name. So we'll do hostname sw0. All right. Now we can get into the actual configuration. The first thing we're going to need is we're going to need a VLAN with an IP address. We're just going to stick with the default VLAN, VLAN 1. So we're going to go ahead, we're going to interface with a VLAN 1, all right. And then we're going to no shut it because it's going to be currently in a shutdown state. So we're going to do no shutdown and then we'll see that port come up and then we'll assign an IP address to it. So we'll do IP address 192.168.0.1 and then we'll do the subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. So let's go ahead, hit enter. We can exit out of configuring this interface and then we're going to do IP DHCP pool. And then if we do a question mark here, we can see it's the name for the pool. So I'm just going to do star, 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 default, VLAN, star, star, star. So anytime in the future that you want to reference this DHCP pool or make configurations to it, you have to put in whatever you put here for the name. All right. So let's go ahead and configure our pool. There's just a few commands we need to do. So the first one is going to be network, right? This is going to be the network ID of this network. So for our case, right, our default gateway may be 192.168.0.1, but the network ID of this subnet is going to be 0.0. .0. So let's go ahead. Let's do 192.168.0.0, and then we have to put the subnet mask, right? So we can tell it how big this network is. So we go ahead, put that subnet mask, and then we hit enter. The next thing we need to do is we need to put the default router. We need to tell uh, the devices where to route their traffic. So we're going to tell it default tech router 192.168.0.1. That's going to be our default gateway, right? Additionally, there are some other options. So if I throw a question mark here, we can see um, we have a DNS server. So if we wanted to, we could do that. We could also set a domain name. So if we want them to be on a specific domain, we could do that as well. Uh, there are also some DHCP options, so these are really useful if you're setting up a Windows deployment server and you need to configure certain um, Pixie boot options and things of that nature. However, we won't need them for this example. The next thing I want to show you guys is how to set up a DHCP exclusion um, or an excluded address. The reason why these are helpful is because if you are doing a mixture of statically assigning and dynamically assigning IP addresses on your network, uh, then you can issue out on accident a duplicate address. Let's say I statically assign 192.168.0.10 to a server on my network. And then our DNS server doesn't have any exclusion set up, so it, or our DHCP server doesn't have any exclusion set up, so it issues out that 10 address. That is going to create some confusion on the network and likely cause both of those devices, or at least one of them, to not function properly. All right, so let's go ahead and let's set up an excluded address. So the command for that is going to be IP DHCP, and then we're going to do excluded address, okay? So we're going to do excluded TAC address, and then we can specify a range of addresses we don't want issued. So we're going to do 192.168.0.0, which we don't need to specify 0.0, .0 but we'll do it anyways. And then we're going to um, supply the high IP address. So this will be whatever uh, the range we want is. So in this case, we'll do 192.168.0.25. What this means is when we go ahead and we request a DHCP address, the first available address is going to be 26. So let's go ahead and give that a shot. We can go ahead, X out of here, come down to both of our devices, 
come into IP configuration and select DHCP and we should see here that it requests a DHCP address. So we can see 26, the right subnet mask and the default gateway. If we come here, do the same, we can see it pulls it and I can go ahead and I can ping 192.168.0.26. And just like that, we're all done. DHCP can be very simple, but it can also be very complex. This is just the basics. Uh, and there are definitely a lot more options. Uh, there are relays, there are DHCP helper addresses, which is if you're hosting a DHCP server on another device, uh, you can point your devices on this uh, part of the network over to that guy so they don't get lost in, uh, in attempting to find an IP address. Uh, and that's, that's pretty much it. If you guys like this video, go ahead, drop a like down below. If you didn't like it, drop a dislike. And if you really enjoyed it, tell me why in a comment. Tell me what you'd like to see in a future video. And until next time, have a good one.